Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining our LinkedIn Live session today on transformation. My name is Lara Cunha, and I work in the global marketing team at Teleperformance. And today I have the pleasure of talking to Sid Mukherjee, who leads a transformation and knowledge services function at Teleperformance. We'll be discussing how companies can accelerate their digital transformation journey and how to future-proof your business. So stay tuned for an interesting conversation and feel free to add your questions in the chat below. Sid, to get us started, can you share a bit more about the transformation and knowledge services team and the kind of capabilities that they offer to our clients? Absolutely. Firstly, thank you, Lara. It's a pleasure to join you today for this dialogue on transformation. At Teleperformance, our go-to framework for driving transformation is TAP. T for technology, A for analytics, and P for process excellence. We have over 700 knowledge services practitioners spread across all our key client geographies with core capabilities in areas such as consulting, analytics, and automation. So can you share more insights on how can we leverage TAP to build a transformation roadmap for our clients? Absolutely. At Teleperformance, we've been fortunate over the years to work very closely with our clients on hundreds of different uh, digital transformations. And based on this collective experience, we strongly believe that digital transformation is not about the technology per se. In fact, it's more about the people. I was reading uh, an article in Harvard Business Review recently by Tom Davenport. And Tom talks about how technology is the engine that drives digital transformation, data is the fuel, and process is the guidance system. And that's exactly the reason why several years ago, we came up with TAP as our go-to framework for driving transformation. Through TAP, we blend methodologies such as design thinking and Lean Six Sigma with intelligent automation and advanced analytics to make our client businesses simpler, faster, safer, and more cost-effective. So being TAP our go-to framework for driving transformation, could you share some examples on how TAP adds value to our clients? Absolutely. Most of our clients' transformation expectations often boil down to two simple objectives. How can we help them continue to improve on customer experience while at the same time keep on reducing the cost to serve? So to that end, our consultants work with our clients in developing future state target operating models or designing and implementing transformation programs. As an example of that, earlier this year, we ran a B2C sales transformation program for a Portuguese bank that resulted in a 200% jump in their sales productivity and about 20 million euros in terms of net new revenues for them. As an example of analytics value add, this is where our data scientists work with our clients on um, you know, tons of customer interaction data to be able to generate insight and value out of that. And as an example of that, for a banking client in India, we developed a predictive recommendation engine that reduced collections calling by up to 60%. So therefore dramatically reducing the cost to collect while at the same time improving the throughput of collections by 5%, again, resulting in millions of dollars worth of collections for them. And finally, our digitization and automation experts help deliver significant savings in cost to serve by driving up human productivity through the use of technology. As example, in, in uh, front office, those would be things like chatbots, voice to messaging, et cetera. In the back office domain, it would be things like uh, robotic process automation, machine learning, et cetera. And as an example of that, in Colombia, we're uh, working alongside one of our uh, food aggregator clients uh, who had a manual process for doing menu uploads. We were able to automate 40% of such transactions through the use of intelligent OCR, optical character recognition, and RPA. Again, uh, you know, tons of uh, savings uh, on the table for them. So the real value that we bring, and these are examples across our consulting analytics automation areas, but the real value is when we bring all of these skill sets together and build, uh, along with our clients, a comprehensive, tailor-made transformation program and then help them implement that. So those are really great international and inspiring success stories. Could you share another example of a major transformation project that has been undertaken recently with some significant benefits to our clients? Sure, I can think of a couple of examples. One, a very simplistic and obvious use case and one slightly more complex one. The more, uh, the simpler one, uh, Lara, is, um, you know, oftentimes our 
agents uh, when responding to customer inquiries, the biggest challenge that they face is having to toggle through multiple applications on their desktop. It ends up increasing average handling times, results in user errors as well. So this is where we have a solution that basically is around screen unification. So it really helps customize uh, a consolidated single screen for the, for the agent where they find all the information. And in a recent rollout we did for, for a client in Latin America, we were able to reduce average handling times by up to 30%, reduce frauds by up to 50%, reduce human errors by up to 60%. So significant benefits that resulted in a payback within a matter of weeks by introducing a simple solution like screen unification. At the other end of the spectrum, we manage complex judgment-based back office transactions for our clients in India. And as an example of that, we do medical coding for healthcare clients, which involves essentially figuring out the right diagnosis code for any ailment from among 70,000 ICD-10 codes that have been defined by the World Health Organization. So there's a huge degree of human dependency and training and knowledge that is needed so that humans can get it correct the first time because there's significant errors associated with any kind of rework. So we ended up building an AI platform that we call TP Optify that uses OCR to scan the medical record, extracts the keywords out of that into a data lake, then uses natural language processing to map them in the dictionary with the corresponding medical codes. And they then predict that uh, it's a machine learning algorithm, uh, you know, with a certain level of confidence, you get uh, the prediction of what the ICD-10 code should be. And as with any form of AI, as we pass millions and millions of records through this, uh, the model has become 100% accurate. It's completely automated, 40% of the transactions, and resulted in millions of dollars of savings for our healthcare clients. I said, those are really outstanding results. Um, coming now to 2020, most of our clients got impacted by the pandemic, obviously at the start of the year, and had to go into BCP mode. How relevant is TAP in the current circumstances? I would argue that TAP is even more relevant than ever before, um, as the pandemic has uh, significantly accelerated the pace of digital transformation. And we've seen this across industries, whether it's banking, healthcare, travel, Wherever there were players who were very advanced in their transformation journeys, they were the ones that were quick to adapt when you, know, you needed to switch on to digital CX channels instead of the traditional ones. But not everyone was, was as well prepared. So to that end, since the start of the year, we've been talking to our clients about really reinforcing some key areas of service delivery uh, so that they are better prepared for uh, such uh, pandemics and, and other um, you know, situations in the, in the future. One theme around that is global sourcing, right? It's uh, been around for a long time. Uh, as, a, as a large organization, you never put all your eggs in one basket. So, you know, working with a partner like Teleperformance, you have the benefit of having service delivery locations onshore, nearshore, and offshore. Secondly, digital channels. I think they, they have been never more important than in 2020. And therefore, every single client is now busy articulating an omni-channel CX strategy, uh, which comprises of things like chat, messaging, social media, in addition to the traditional uh, customer interaction channels as well. Thirdly, I think virtual operating models have really, really dramatically grown this year, right? And to that end, we've got TP Cloud Campus, which we, which we launched as well. And that really helps you tap into a cloud-based a uh, virtual workforce that is always available and you can pay and use on an on-demand manner. And finally is this whole area of intelligent automation or what analysts also call as hyper automation uh, so that you also build up a digital workforce comprising of chatbots, back office bots, et cetera, uh, to augment the human workforce. So those are the big four themes of um, you know, transformation that we are talking uh, with our clients in 2020. One of the aspects of service delivery that you mentioned is our virtual operating model. So TP Cloud Campus, our next generation model for optimizing remote teams. So how does TP Cloud Campus integrate with the digital transformation journey of our clients? Look, we all know that uh, due to the pandemic at the start of 2020, every single industry had to move to a virtual cloud-based operating model overnight. Uh, but, you know, these uh, service delivery models have a role to play even in the long term. 
at TP uh, six or seven months into the pandemic, actually almost eight or nine months into the pandemic now, we still operate 80% virtually and about 20% in physical offices. And all the metrics that we track, whether they are our own operating metrics, whether they are client SLAs, we are doing either on par or better uh, than in the traditional physical environments. So that's why I think that longer term, most of our large clients are going to you know, have maybe up to a third of their service delivery uh, sourced from virtual operating models. And that's the reason at Teleperformance, uh, we've invested significantly in uh, TP Cloud Campus. And that really uh, combines the best of both a physical and a virtual operating model uh, through a mix of physical cloud campus hubs that we are creating all around the world. And these are physical centers which act as the nerve center of our virtual operations. This is where we have our workforce management, our quality, our recruiters, trainers, all the ops managers overseeing the hundreds of thousands of remote staff. So it's really impressive how these hubs work as the nerve center of all of our operations globally. Now, digital transformation can be very confusing and it can mean different things to different people. So how do we go about helping our clients to ensure that they are choosing the best suited products or solutions? You're absolutely right, Lara. Digital can be a very ambiguous and a very nebulous area and different uh, stakeholders can have very different sort of expectations or interpretations from digital transformation. So before jumping straight into any kind of a product or a solution, it's best to start with a detailed understanding of what the business need or the problem is that one is trying to solve for. As an example, say you are trying to improve employee productivity, which is you know, often the case in, in service delivery. And one can do that in many different ways. Uh, one way we all know is through increased scrutiny. Uh, one can use one of several desktop activity tracking tools that are available in the market. Or you can be less intrusive. You can you know, come up with a gamification solution that gamifies the work environment through leaderboards or incentives for the best performers. Or you can create a personalized digital coach that leverages AI, really understands the employee sentiment, and nudges them with the right set of behaviors. And those are just three ideas that I can throw out there on employee productivity. And you know, there are so many different types of solutions that are available today for solving any kind of business problem. And, and I think when the answer or the solution is not very clear, design thinking is a great methodology to use because it starts by empathizing with the user need, you know, basis which you define this, the scope of the solution, and then you ideate with different types of stakeholders across the organization through your partner ecosystem. You build prototypes, you test, uh, you improve, and then finally you, you implement the, the best suited solution that you want. How, so how different is it to drive transformation in the front office versus the back office? I don't think uh, it's radically different. I think uh, some of the methodologies and solutions might be different. For instance, when you're doing front office transformation, you might start with customer journey mapping. Uh, in the back office sense, you might do some kind of business process mapping. Uh, similarly, in terms of solutions, it could be chatbots uh, when doing a CX transformation. It could be unassisted bots in a back office environment. But at the end of the day, the transformation levers are still the same. So again, it goes back to driving up human productivity or reducing errors or improving customer satisfaction. And those have implications from front to back. Uh, so, you know, and, and this is a real differentiator for teleperformance because we are amongst very few digital integrated business services partners who can cater to the end to end value chain uh, from front to back. So I would I would advocate for, um, you know, an end to end business transformation as opposed to a siloed way of doing front office and back office separately, uh, because if you take the customer journey view of it, um, it's um, it's comprehensive from front to back. Thanks for clarifying, Sid. And I love how you're advocating that end-to-end -end business transformation overview. Sid, since we're almost at the end of our session today, is there any key message that you'd like to leave the audience with? Absolutely. I think um, I, was, I was going through a research from McKinsey recently, which talked about how 70% of digital transformation programs don't end up meeting their stated objectives. And there are several reasons for it not enough C-level sponsorship, misaligned expectations, resistance to change, 
not having the right skill sets, etc. So it's very important that we have very clearly defined outcomes in terms of financial as well as operating metrics. And while, while we all know that the biggest beneficiary of transformation are humans, the biggest bottleneck to change are also humans. So it's very important that we communicate the change and the expected outcomes again and again, so that all our stakeholders, whether they are employees or end customers, are completely aligned. So in a nutshell, when you think of transformation, start with the organizational objectives, tie those in with the operating challenges you face, and then build a roadmap that stitches together the three dimensions of technology, analytics, and process excellence. Good. Thank you so much for all of your valuable insights today. We've had some great feedback from our audience as well, and it's always a pleasure to see you and to keep learning from you. <laughs> thank you, Lara. The pleasure is all mine. Uh, thank you, and thank you to all of our audience who has been listening today. I hope this has been useful for everyone as a Transformation 101. We are planning a long series of LinkedIn Live events on various aspects of TAP. This is for 2021, so stay tuned. And we invite you to visit our website for more content as well. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Sid. Thank you. Bye-bye.